Hello future surgeons and welcome back to our surgical education series. Today we have an exciting topic for our surgery trainees, the thick walled gallbladder. Understanding its diagnosis and management is crucial for a successful surgical career. Before we get into the nitty gritty details, let's understand why thick walled gallbladder is significant. It is often a puzzle for many surgeons and mastering its diagnosis and management is essential for providing optimal patient care. As cholecystectomy is one of the most common procedures performed in surgery, so friends, you will encounter these patients and it's, I mean, uh, essential that you understand this topic to the core. In this context, it is recommended that you watch our video series that is Management of Gallbladder Cancer that will help you to understand this topic even better and the whole series is available on our app and our youtube channel the link for everything is available in description and for a better learning experience it is recommended to download the app which is available for android and ios i have no disclosures some of the opinions expressed expressed are based on uh, my personal experience and in case of any discrepancy please refer to the standard textbooks so we have divided this series in two or three videos to keep the video length optimum and we will start with clinical case scenarios then followed by definition types of thick wall gallbladder etiology diagnostic approaches the gb rats then we will talk about xentho and ig4 disease what are the surgical options especially emphasis special emphasis on the lucknow approach and surgical option in gallbladder cancer and followed by another clinical case scenario and challenge so let's start first with a first case scenario and uh, it is recommended that you make your uh, management option management plan as we discuss so that you can uh, i mean judge whether your ma management is matching with our management or not so this was a 47 year female known case of copd bronchiectasis she was uh, symptomatic with fatty dyspepsia biliary pain for last four months there was no other positive history her general physical examination, systemic examination was normal, routine work was normal, ultrasound was suggestive of two sessile masses in the gallbladder, which was measuring 15 to 16 mm maximum. There was sludge present, there was no stone, and tumor markers were within normal limit. So, if this patient uh, you are dealing with, what will be your next management option? So, we subjected this patient, uh, this lady, to this. Uh, a CCT abdomen and these are the sagittal images here you can appreciate the thickening uh, in the uh, wall and near the fund fundus uh, of the gallbladder the view this thickening is even better appreciated and these are the axial images here you can appreciate the thickening near the fundus and two sessile masses which are projecting into the lumen of the gallbladder so this is the CT report, gallbladder is partially distended and show, shows significantly thick and enhancing 89 hospital unit fundal wall thickening anteriorly with it is showing preserved fat planes with adjacent liver parenchyma, no hepatic lesions seen, no significant upper uh, abdominal lipidinopathy. In, in any CT scan uh, where you are suspecting GB thickening, it is uh, desirable and you must insist for the thickness in mm that how much is the thickness which is missing in this report this was the impression given that is irregularly thickened enhancing gb balls with presently preserved fat planes with adjacent liver parenchyma with presently no significant upper abdominal lipidinopathy needs hp collation query query neoplastic etiology suspected in the background of these findings that uh, this 47 year lady uh, bronchiectasis copd uh, how will you manage the tumor markers are normal there are suspicious thickening which the MMBA don't know it is projected into the lumen no lip nodes so again uh, subjecting these this patient to a major surgery is again a uh, problematic because of the COPD so how will you manage this patient whether you do lab cholecystectomy open cholecystectomy or whether you will do staging laparoscopy or straight forward extended cholecystectomy so now uh, you have to write your plan now you can rewind this uh, video from here and go back again to check the findings and then write it uh, down so that uh, you can judge your management plan with our management plan. So our plan was staging laparoscopy and uh, then, then we will proceed. So uh, there was no finding on staging laparoscopy. There was no growth evident. We opened this patient with the Makochi right Makochi incision, modified Makochi incision. And uh, 
uh, then uh, there was no growth palpable even in the interpretive assessment these are the interpretive picks and if you're watching this video as a free video on our youtube channel then we'll apply some sort of filter to keep uh, this video as per the youtube monet uh, monetization guidelines otherwise the whole video get demonetized and we will not get the peanuts uh, uh, whatever we are getting from the youtube so in the interpretive uh, these photos you can appreciate that we palpated the call letter there was no mass palpable everything was looking absolutely fine normal no growth palpable again if you are uh, dealing with this patient you have opened this patient how will you manage now whether you will do open colostectomy simple open colostectomy or you will do external colostectomy that will be liver wedge plus lymphadectomy so what will be your management option now so we did uh, extended colostectomy that will be liver wedge plus colostectomy and lymphadectomy and these are the pics of the liver wedge this is the cut open specimen and you can very well basically uh, see that there was a fungating mass which we could not palpate in a distended gallbladder final histopathological examination and the imprint smear was suggestive adenocarcinoma coming to the second clinical case scenario so this was a 55 year old female with no known comorbidity she had history of biliary pain jaundice with cholecholithiasis 3 months back with a sh for that she underwent ERCP and clearance with CVD stent in C2 there was no other positive history in the form of loss of appetite or loss of weight or any other lump palpable again remember that the age uh, is 55 general physical examination systemic examination everything was normal routine workup and tumor markers that was CEA and CA 19.9 was everything within normal limits this was one of the ultrasound which showed uh, gallbladder shows thickened wall again the thickness is missing how much thickness is there that is important and uh, we will discuss more about this thickness as the discussion will evolve in this video that is how much thickness is there it has a very important bearing on our diagnosis and management with multiple calculi in its lumen with the largest calculus of 23 mm rest everything was normal in uh, to measure the thickness uh, we subjected this patient to repeat ultrasound which showed a large calculus with the gallbladder thickness report was 2.8 mm so again if you are managing this patient if you are treating surgeon for this patient how will you proceed with these findings and this for this patient please write it down so this patient was admitted for a lab coli but procedures were deferred because there was suspicious thickening and we kept the age in mind that was 55 so we subjected this patient to cct so the gallbladder wall was metrically thickened with some irregularity near the fundic region you can very well appreciate the irregularity near the fundic region in these closer views in these axial uh, in these sagittal images uh, we can very well appreciate the thickening is there and there you, if you look close closely uh, there are some uh, i mean hypotenuse foci in the wall of gallbladder again uh, you must stick to the end of this uh, video series then you will understand these foci uh, are one of the hallmark for the xantho and rest you, the irregularity thickness you can very well appreciate so this is the ct report for this patient call bed is distended and show possibility of large hypotenuse focus with hypotenuse rim measuring 20 into 23 mm gb neck region cholelithiasis there is asymmetrical enhancing thickening of GB wall measuring up to 9.5 mm in the fundic region with multiple hypertense foci within its lumen in fundic region. It has maintained fat planes with liver parenchyma. So here in this report, they have mentioned the thickness that is 9.5 mm. This was the impression that there is asymmetrical circumferential thickening involving the fundic region of gallbladder with lymph nodes at porta hepatitis square in neoplastic etiology. Cholelithiasis with prominent CBD minimum pneumobilia. Just remember that this patient was post ERCP and uh, clearance. So pneumobilia is because of that. So again, if you are uh, uh, the person who is managing this patient, how will you proceed from this? That is uh, lap coli, open coli, staging lap, extend coli, or another option would be uh, the Lucknow approach. So we did staging laparoscopy followed by extended, extended coli that is formal lymph node dissection and liver wedge dissection. These are the interpretive pictures delineate, uh, depicting how the clearance of the hepatodrenal ligament. Everything is uh, basically cleared, all the fibro fatty tissue around the hepatic artery, the right and left hepatic artery, GDA, portal vein, CBD, everything is cleared. Remember that this patient was post ERCP and stenting 
and the lymph node dissection is a bit difficult and uh, because of the inflamed tissue around the pota. The cut open specimen here the mucosa looks fine however there is a thickening uh, which looks benign and uh, uh, near the fundic region. And the final histopathological examination report for this patient was benign. The rate of these two cases is that PET CT not done in either of case and our limitation is that frozen section is not available in our institute. So the dilemma as you have uh, gone through two patient, the second patient was looking more uh, I mean suspicious for malignancy as compared to the first case but the histopathological examination report was otherwise that the first case was uh, malignancy and the second case was benign. So both the patient were symptomatic with biliary lithiasis. We live in high endemic area, we uh, see these patients regularly of gallbladder cancer, incident of gallbladder cancer uh, and so on. The symptoms are subtle, patient, uh, none of the patient had any uh, symptom which was suggestive of uh, malignancy like loss of appetite, loss of weight or the palpable GB lump. The thickening is subtle, 9 mm, 3 mm, 4 mm, 6 mm. Tumor markers were normal in both the cases. There were no red flag signs or symptoms suggestive of the malignancy. So uh, it is very difficult to distinguish between these two entities whether we are dealing with a benign case or malignant, malignant disease and the disease spectrum is varied. With this clinical background friends, now I want to approach this topic that how to approach this thick wall gallbladder uh, cases. So as in all my talks, the reference to the all the facts and figures which I give are given in these uh, videos and I encourage my viewers and trainees to go through these uh, articles to have a better understanding. So the normal gallbladder wall thickness is less than 3 mm. In a retrospective review of 4,119 patients of normal subject, gallbladder wall measure 2.6 plus minus 1.6 mm. So that is the range of normal wall gallbladder. It is called thick wall gallbladder if there is a focal thickness which is measuring more than 4 mm. Focal mean uh, the, the whole gallbladder is not thick, it is one place only. There is maybe neck or maybe the, uh, the fundus. And if it is it is level, uh, if the diffuse thickness is more than 7 mm, uh, though that is mostly related to inflammatory condition which are intrinsic to gallbladder or extra cholecystic disease. So uh, you have to understand there are two things. If the gallbladder wall is focally thickened, more than 4 mm, then we are dealing with thick wall gallbladder. If we are, it is diffusely thickened, the circumferential, the thickness of whole the gallbladder is thickened and its thickness more than 7 mm, then we are dealing with a case of thick wall gallbladder. And again, in the beginning only, I want to say that the focal thickness is always suspicious and it always needs evaluation. So if you are dealing with a case where the gallbladder thickness is focally more than 4 mm, be suspicious and plan your management accordingly. These are the causes of diffuse GB ball thickening that will be acute and chronic cholecystitis, adenomyomatosis, xanthogonomatous cholecystitis and GB carcinoma. Systemic disease, any disease which leads to the serocytes or generalized edema will lead to the GB ball thickening that can be hepatitis, congestive heart failure, renal failure, sepsis, hypoalbuminemia or there can be spread of inflammation from nearby organ like pancreatitis, pyelonephritis, colitis or peritonitis. The rare cause of symmetrical or uh, diffuse GB wall thickening will be IgG4 that we will also discuss briefly in the later part. So these are the causes of focal GB wall thickening friends. Again, remember that focal wall thickening is mostly due to the intrinsic causes so that are inherent to the GB ball. So we have to be more suspicious. Mostly they are not uh, benign. The malignant cause will be gallbladder cancer, GB lymphoma, metastasis, mostly from the melanoma. And really the benign cause will be focal xantho, focal adenomyotosis, or localized chronic cholecystitis. And uh, again, focal GB thickening, suspicion is always high. And this talk is even more important to us especially the people living in the North India or in endemic areas because uh, we are living in endemic area of GB malignancy and uh, we have seen many instances where the, this diagnosis is missed and patient land up with the uh, I mean missed or incidental gallbladder cancer so called incidental and uh, the subtle thickening can be early malignancy it can be missed and benign condition like cholecystitis or complicated cholecystitis in the form of xantho or GB polyp can mimic uh, the gallbladder cancer. So friends, just remember that any gallbladder thickness which is less than 3 mm is benign for all practical purposes. 
and if it is more than 20 mm take it as malignant un until unless proved otherwise because the chance of malignancy in these cases are more than 50 percent so less than 3 is benign more than 20 is malignant the dilemma is between 4 to 20 mm that is thick ball gallbladder and that is the focus of talk for this again this 4 to 20 can be focal versus diffuse and the management option will uh, change according to the thickness so uh, we will end up end this video here to keep this video length short otherwise it is difficult to retain the attention of students in the present era of shorts and reels so we will discuss the diagnostic approaches uh, and the rest of the topics will be covered in the subsequent parts and for exclusive and early access to the sd content please download our app or join the channel membership uh, for uh, early and exclusive access and the link for everything is available in description of this video and for a better learning experience it is recommended that you download our app which is available for android and ios so let's carry forward the knowledge gained today with a sense of purpose remember every challenge presents an opportunity for growth and innovation thank you for your time dedication and commitment to excellence so i also wish my viewers uh, merry christmas and happy new year ahead so we are making this video around this festival season. We wish you a healthy, promising and happy new year and Merry Christmas. If you have any question or uh, any doubt related to this talk, you can connect to us through the comment section on YouTube or the chat option available on our app. So I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned for more educational content. And as always, keep striving for excellence in your surgical journey. Wish you a happy learning. Thank you very much.